<laughs> hey everybody i hope you're enjoying this wonderful lion's gate 8 8 portal that we are have been experiencing for quite a while so what i did today was i did a little bit of meditating and uh sage called in the energy of that orion's belt and serious energy coming in um, also, Lyran energy, I would say, is coming in, too, um, with our Lion's Gate 8-8. So, I thought I would pull from um, this, let's see, oops, <laughs> uh, this deck. I love this deck. It's called Living with a Feather Heart, right? And it's Ma'at's wisdom. And I thought that would be fitting for this evening um, for our Lion's Gate. So, I want to, I've shuffled, I've saged. I've actually um, activated these uh, this deck under this uh, copper pyramid today, so that we could get the you know the most benevolent and highest message that we could from my art. And so I've shuffled and I'm gonna pull a card, and we're just gonna see what my art. Ooh, <laughs> so she has two came out. One is, I regard all altars with respect, and I create with harmony. So this is the energy that I would assume that we are experiencing, or what Ma'at chooses to come forth and speak about, right? So that's one, and I don't know how in the world to make this so that you can see it. Hope you can see that. <laughs> so let's, let's look at... Um, I regard all altars with respect because I think when we think of altars, we think of things that are outside of ourselves, right? And I've always been told that, you know, as a religious person, church was within me, right? So if church is within me, then I am my own shrine, correct? So if you're respecting, if you're regarding all altars with respect then you're regarding your inner altar with respect right you're respecting yourself in other words so I just want to read a little from that the altar is a sacred space where we pay respect to the elements artifacts and teachers who have had a divine impact on our lives with this creative reality while some of the traditional altars of ancient times were used for sacrifices or offerings and religious ceremonies, modern day altars can be a magical tool in their own right, not as sacrificial venues, but rather spaces of sacredness honored. So I wanna, uh, something's coming to my mind now, reminding us that tonight with this lion's gate, right? This, this portal opening, the altar, our earthly altars are literally our pyramids, right? The pyramids in Giza that align with the king's chamber and the Orion's belt, which points straight to Sirius, right? All of that is, that portal is open right now. And it's really working with us to bring us manifestation, right? Protection and, and so much abundance, right? So, a good, like to all this week or this month, I would take time to really detox my body. I would get closer to nature as much as possible because you know, if you live on the East Coast, the winter is coming, right? I would put light foods and vegetables, you know, vegetables, fruits, water, lots of water in my body right now. Because what's happening is through this portal opening, there are light codes that are coming through. Light codes are always coming through, right? They're always coming through to us. But this particular portal is very strong because what it does it is it assists us with shaking off anything that we don't need to move forward in our lives. This one is super big in particular too because the Pluto return to the United States, right? Within the next few years. So that's why this portal opening is very important because we can use it to usher in a new us a new you, right? You can shake off some old you and usher in some new you. And and that, to me, you know, 
that's that's also part of honoring your your sacred altar your within yourself um it says regardless of religion or tradition the area of the altar is a place where microcosm manifests altars honor the masters of mind and the elemental powers that fuel each unique expression of divinity right respect and allow honor and give blessings bow to the heart of creation which is at the essence of every tradition even though you may not fully appreciate or understand each one you can design what feels best intuitively but stay true to the heart of the altar remember to infuse it with the elements of earth air fire and water honor the cardinal directions and hold your teachers deities masters goddesses or gods in the highest esteem so as a, a, con, a practicing a con west african um a con practitioner i'm going to show you my altar this is my sacred space so you see the white uh gourd there with my bead my ceremonial beads or a henny you see my plant there you see some other shrine items there. You see my ancestors there at the bottom. So your shrine on the outside of you is however you make it, right? However you choose to honor, however, whatever you choose to put on there to honor um, your ancestors and deities and yourself. And it's a, it's a nice sacred space to go within. So I really love sitting right here in front of my altar, my sacred space, my shrine. Um, and honoring those deities and ancestors that paved the way for us to be here. So um, that's part of the energy that's coming through, ancestral energy, um, uh, really ancient ancestral energy that really points to your ancientness and your, and your like, although we are descendants of ancestors, we're also ancestors because it's a cycle right so what this moon what the, i'm sorry what this portal does it points to your divinity it points to your your sacredness right it shows you your way back to the path of your ancestors and i think when you're walking on the path on the way back towards with your your benevolent ancestors and what what they've paved for you everything else falls away automatically like it just naturally falls away because you're walking the path. So sometimes we stress about some of the negative things that we may have picked up in life or, or low vibrational or low frequency things in life that we feel as though may be destroying us, but we just continue to walk the path and those things will fall away. I know that that is a message not only for you, but for me as well. Um, so the other card that came out was I Create Harmony. Now, let me tell you something about I Create Harmony. Every time, every time I have pulled these cards, that card pops out. And sometimes I just throw it back in. Because I'm like, what are you coming out again for? But this time, I said, I'm going to read this card. Because for some reason, it needs to be said. It needs to be read. So... This speaks about the music of the spheres, right? The spheres within us are our chakra systems, right? This is the is our spiral cycle of our lives. This is a code codex, right? This is what allows us to create the harmony in our lives. So let's read about this because th really what it's talking about is aligning your chakras right so let's talk about it it says every spirit was believed to relate to a number and every number to a sound and with their interplay a cosmic symphony harmoniously traveling through space becomes a luminous metaphor which can be understood and applied in relationship to create to i create harmony right so what it's saying is that the understanding of how correspondence works between all the various planes that we live on, so far as our mental plane, our spiritual plane, our physical plane, our material universe, all those things um, all have a, a frequency and a vibration, right? Our mineral kingdom, vegetable kingdom, our animal kingdom, even our, our metallics, like our metals, right? All of that has a, a frequency and a vibration. And when 
you find the certain keys, you can harmonize those. And that's when you become an alchemist, okay? When you can harmonize, when you can use them and blend them to create, right? Then you are a true alchemist. And that's, this is what this gate is, is doing for us. It's showing us <laughs> literally the pathway back to who we are. All of us have divinity within us. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My cat is trying to make an appearance. But, um, you know, all of us have divinity within us. No one is um, has an exception from that. The keys to that path way back is definitely working through your chakras, your chakra systems. Also working with your planetary systems, your astrological systems, right? your astronomical systems. All of those are created, are, are, are integrated to create harmony for our lives, okay? So, it, it, what the book is saying here is that with, the, with all these keys, right, that you have, the different levels and various vibrational frequencies that you have, with those keys, you can open new doors. Because you're, you're an alchemist, so you're creating the new. Now, it's not anything new under the sun, but what you're doing is creating the new for yourself, the new you. This is about the new you. I think that's what I'm going to title this, the new you, or something along those lines. Because that's what this lion's gate is ushering in. It's like the historical spiral cycle, or the figure eight I guess some people like to call it the figure eight, the symbol, infinity. It's like, can you see that infinity symbol? So what you're doing is you're just starting from the beginning again. You're, you're at ma'at. So like we call it a historical spiral cycle in, Akan, in our um, Akan teachings. And here is where ma'at would be at the top. Isfet is at the bottom. Isfet is chaos. Ma'at is peace and righteousness and balance and, and, and order. And all in the middle right here is where we are. <laughs> we right here, but we on the rise. We coming up, but we right here going through a little bit of chaos because it takes these two things to cross to make the change. The grand cross makes the change, right? That's what makes the transition when you cross over something. I hope I'm explaining this right. But anyway, those who know will know. Those who hear will hear. Those who see will see. So, anyway, that's what this Lion's Gate is about. It's about the new you. It's about ushering in that energy. Onyx, come. It's about ushering in that energy to create a new you, to, to forge a new path. We've been on a lot of different paths, right? Now it's time to integrate all the, the light paths into one and start walking in that, that one path. We got many paths. You know how they say it's many paths, but um, many, many paths, but few are chosen or something like that. It's like we're at that point now where we, our path has been illuminated. It's illuminated, so we can see it now. And that's what the gate does. It illuminates that path, and it brings in those codes. It brings in that key so that you can walk through the doors. And the thing is, right now, of course, we feel apprehensive and about walking through a door. You know, we, we feel apprehensive about that because we don't, we really just don't know. We have to really rely on our trust. We have to rely on our root chakra. That's why you got to clear these fears. That's why you have to clear this energy because you got to really trust that you are safe and secure in walking forward and on this path. So, um... I'm trying to think if I had anything else to say about this Lion's Gate energy. Um, my aunt and her and all her beautiful wisdom. Balance is another thing. Um, a, another big theme of this Lion's Gate energy because the male and feminine dynamic is now starting to gel a little more. Um, you can feel that energy gelling a little more. You don't feel so far apart from your your fellow man. You know what I'm saying? You feel more connected as below. 
we're starting to move the energy of the earth into a more fifth dimensional reality, right? We're moving with her. If you feel a little nauseated or a little faint at heart, a little dizzy, it's because the earth is spinning faster and she's shaking off everything she don't need. And, and we are very much a part of that shaking off the humans of this planet who don't vibrate at that frequency. And you'll know when you stop vibrating at that frequency because everything will start going to pot. <laughs> and you'll have to try to figure it out so you can get your energy back up. So, I just wanted to bring forth some a message from my aunt, some wisdom, some clarity and guidance from her. Um, our heart, you know, keep your heart light as a feather. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your heart shouldn't be heavier than this. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a life where your heart is not halfway as heavy as this feather? This feather's light, look. <laughs> so can you imagine a heart as light as this? <laughs> Let's try for that, all right? Um, I hope you all enjoy this 8-8 Lions Gate. Please write down your intentions, your visions, your dreams, your missions. Don't shame with